morning and happy Sabbath. I am here to present a paper on the postmodern approach. No, just kidding. I am here to uh, share a testimony. Um, I am here to share a testimony about uh, how theology and mission, how theology shapes mission in my life. Um, I suppose to, uh, to answer the question of how theology and mission relate to each other, I first have to define what theology is and what mission is. Theology now, as I understand it, is the pursuit of understanding what scripture has to teach us today. Or what does God reveal in revelation about himself, our world, and truth? Or what is our understanding of God? And mission and missiology is what are we to do as believers in light of that? What are we to do as the church? What is our task as the body of Christ to fulfill the task God has given us? And how do we accomplish that task? And so as I've been thinking about theology and mission, uh, the question I've been asking myself is how does my understanding of God shape what I do as a believer? How do my beliefs shape my actions? How does my faith, as James says, how does my faith become works? And so to put it bluntly, the the first realization I have is this. Good theology will shape successful mission, but bad theology will be detrimental to mission. Because when you live in the real world, when people look at you or when I look at people, when we look at, at missionaries, and we see their actions and the way they do mission, it all goes back to this question. Who is the God you are serving? Why Are you serving a God of fear and terror, or do you serve a God who is loving and merciful? Who is the God that you serve? Let me give you a very harsh, uh, exaggerated uh, example of this. In the United States, a majority of evangelical Christians have a distorted theology. They believe that God has chosen the U.S. as his instrument to rule the world, that the United States is the greatest country on earth, it has the authority to destroy the environment, that Christians should be oppressing minorities, and that the wealthy must keep their wealth. This kind of bad theology, this misunderstanding of God and the meaning of what it means to be Christian, this kind of bad theology is what shapes, is what influences leaders to invade Iraq and Afghanistan. It's this kind of distorted theology that somehow allows many American evangelicals to make Christianity look bad. You can see that in the news when you look at things like the, what Donald Trump is saying. And many Christians endorse him. And so when I look at that, I wonder how could you possibly be a Christian? How can you also support a man or support ideas that are against what Christianity is about. Another example is that ISIS is a mass of Muslims who have a distorted view of God that drives them to wreak chaos and violence. So when you believe that your God is a God of terror and fear, when your theology is based on violence and destruction, that causes you to murder ruthlessly and to cause violence and destruction in your place, that that becomes your mission. Now, a positive example, take a look at our church. Look at the Adventist theology that drove our pioneers to find hope amidst disappointment. Look at our theology that has pushed us to go to the ends of the world, to build churches and hospitals and schools, to bring the gospel to to far off places that no one has ever visited. Do you see how good theology or bad theology shapes mission? But of course, things aren't perfect in our own faith community, whether it is in the local bickering of small church politics or polarization and misunderstanding in the global level. We find ourselves facing problems as we try to continue our mission as a church. I'm sure you guys see those kinds of problems every day. And so I believe true mission, successful mission, must be grounded in good, true theology. 
if we were talking about the way theology influences mission, we must be grounded in good theology that drives mission to success. Is our theology grounded in the word of God? Is your theology centered on Jesus Christ? Are we as a church, is our church's mission drawn to Jesus Christ or are we driven by things such as pride, ignorance, legalism, or ignorance, or fear? Sometimes we might make the mistake, do we do mission to show off our skills that we've learned here at COT? Do we do mission just to show off our skills in Greek or Hebrew or systematic? Do we do those things to show off or do we do those things because we are afraid of hellfire or do we do those things with a misunderstanding of what evangelism is, believing that we are the last resort, that unless we preach that word and unless somebody hears that word, people are going to be lost. Do we have a misunderstanding of how God relates to humanity and how salvation actually works in relation to, to evangelism? I remember when I was doing literature evangelism in the US, um, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's very scary because, um, I, I mean, you can imagine how scary it would be. You, you have to walk up to a door cold and you have to go very quickly. I think I've talked to, uh, to I've shared some of my, my stories about that with some of you. It's, it's very scary and, and when you do that every day for a couple months, um, there's a fear that's built inside you and I felt like I was starting to do that literature evangelism out of fear rather than out of my love for people and my love for God. And that was unhealthy. But as I've grown and as I've come to grow in my relationship with, with God and as I've come to develop a stronger theology, I've come to find mission work to be exciting. And I'm sure you guys see that too. When we do Voice of Youths, when we, when we go out and do outreach, we, we should find enjoyment from it because we love God and we love people and we want to be able to... The things that we do should be able to express that. Good theology drives mission. Thus, a theology of hope leads to a mission of determination. A theology of faith is a mission that brings works. And a theology of love brings a mission of compassion. Whereas a theology of despair, cynicism, doubt, and fear leads to mission of destruction. And so as I've been thinking about this, it's almost as if the concept of theology could be exchanged with the concept of a relationship with God. Like, we could liken theology to a relationship of intellect, learning, faith, and trust in God. And without a rela real relationship with God, what, could, what would be of our Christian faith? We say that a true, a true relationship with God leads to, 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 ex to an external influence in someone's life. And so, just like a relationship with God leads to a changed life, a good and true theology grounded in scripture and Jesus Christ leads to good and true mission. A good theology that is centered on Jesus Christ and founded on the word of God matters. How else would we, as a diverse global church, be united despite our disagreements? How else could we be able to hold on to hope amidst disappointment? What else would we have in common if it weren't for our unity in Christ? Thus, whether we work in materialist societies or postmodern environments, whether we work in urban or rural areas, whether we are among the young or the old, Jesus will always be relevant, Jesus will always be the center, and Jesus will always be the answer to each of these peoples. Our mission, in its essence, will not become, let me tell you about the calculation of the 2300 days, or you will be baptized with the healing wonders of water. No. Our mission will always go back to, let me tell you about my Jesus. When you study theology and you come across an amazing, brilliant piece of knowledge, does that beauty of theology drive you to help people find that beauty in studying God's word and to coming to a, a, a close relationship with Jesus Christ? When you conceptualize a beautiful idea in your Bible study, in your research, in your paper writing, in your reading, do you realize that that drive, that passion inside you ought to drive you to sh help other people find that truth also? Let me give you one example. Um, Pastor Knauss, 
in, uh, in, in several of your classes, you, you always bring out Rene, Rene Descartes, who says, I think, therefore I am, right? The second one is um, Pascal, who says, OK. And then the last one is Pastor Cano says, I belong, therefore I am. And to be honest, Pastor, <laughs> this was me as a, as a young freshman. I, I, I was like, what could he possibly mean by that? Because who was Pastor Canaus to contend with Rene Descartes? <laughs> it took me time to understand and think about what that meant. I belong, therefore I, I am. And in, in studying my Bible, I came across several passages. Um, for example, in Ephesians 1-4 in the NIV, it says, God chose us to belong to Christ before the world was created. He chose us to be holy and without blame in his eyes. He loved us. As I, as I had to think about that idea, I realized that, okay, I had to realize you were right, but I realized you were right because, let, okay, tell me if I, if I have this correct. Because what Rene Descartes was saying was that self-cognition determines our existence or self-awareness. But for us as Christians, it is not self-cognition, I think therefore I am, that determines our existence, that our self-awareness precludes our conceptualization. Rather, the very predestined notion that we as human beings belong to God is the ontological basis for our existence. Okay? Okay, big words. I had to think about that, and that blew my mind. I realized, wow, because we belong to God, that determines our existence. Not that we are able to think for ourselves, not that we are able to our reason ourselves into reality. God is the basis of our reality, not us. That's one example, and I, I bring that example to say, when you think about a beautiful piece of theology that, makes, that, that opens your mind, that, realize, that makes you realize how, how wonderful and amazing God is, and, and the, the beauty of the truth that he's given us, that, that passion should drive us to share with other people. That, that passion should drive us to, 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 to expand our mission, to help people develop relationship with Christ, to, to help them understand what righteousness by faith is, to help them grow in their understanding of God. And so I believe the discussion in theology comes down to this question. Who is the God that you serve? Because your mission will show who it is that you, who the God is behind your actions, what it is that is driving you, whether you believe that God is a God of fear and terror or whether you believe God is merciful and loving and just. Who is the God we serve today? Amen.